We promised you that after the scientist, and I told you, we will not only talk about the rats, there will also be some transfer to what we will do in the coffee break and what you can do in training. I'm very pleased now to come to our guest best practice from the field. So, Steph, can we reduce the light? Following the principle, I think the brain research will confirm that one time seeing is better than 100 times hearing. It's the 100 meters final at the World Under 20 Championships. And they are away, and a good start made by Monarang and also by Zori. And Schwartz is being pushed really hard here. It's very, very close as they approach the line. And on the outside, it's Zori of Indonesia. It's a big story in the 100 meters final. 10.19. Zori is the new champion, a new national record, and we have a new world champion in Tampere. It is our pleasure to have Zori with us. Silakan. Sit here, yeah? Can we go back with the light? Athlete centered, science based, coach driven. So this performance is based on coaching and it's a team. Most of you are working in a team of coaches. The Chinese friends taught me when I was working there, three stupid people together are much better than one knowledgeable. So Roman and I, we make already a good start. We look for the third one. Yeah? <laughs> so work in a team. What is the Indonesian team behind that performance? This is Ibu Sumatoyo. I'm happy representing IWF that she's a level three coach. She did her sprints and hurdles in Bangkok. And we have with us the two coaches, Erwin and Kikin. Please stand up, give them a clap. <laughs> you sit there. You will be surprised to see Daegu Korea, why Kikin did his IWF certificate in Korea. And I would like to use the opportunity to greet our Korean friends and say thank you to them because we have a very constructive cooperation with them. Every year, they invite 20 countries globally, pay everything, coming to Korea, and in cooperation with us, qualify continuous professional development for coaches. Please, Mr. Young, he's the manager, stand up and get some advice. People talk about globalization, we practice it here and everywhere. So we have this fantastic gold medal made in Indonesia. I also have the privilege, when we talk about Indonesia, to welcome Yang Taomat Wibik, Seg Yawati Firman, please stand up. She's the ambassador for Indonesia in Helsinki. We know in coaching that without government backup and support on elite level, we cannot work. And we are really pleased to welcome Selamat Datang di sini. Good. Professor, the brain has to be there. <laughs> what we will do? Let me have a first stupid question. And then we open the floor to you. This is your time to interact and to ask questions. Remember, there should be no stupid question, only stupid answer. So when I followed the presentation of Professor and thinking about what has the Indonesian... Sorry, we have a translator, a professional translator who was provided by the Indonesian government. He came here today to help us. Please give him a warm welcome. And 
you speak please into the microphone so our friends in the back can translate because your Bahasa may not be so good, so you understand. Now, when we hear Roman today talking about how to increase performance, I had the privilege to hear him before, but it's always amazing. So, skill learning, tyrosine. I think when the military is interested in this, there may be some area also for us. Carbo, caffeine, mouth rice, doing skills, Papa Kiki, did you do in your skill training to prepare this gold medal of your athlete? What were the tools, the skills, the methods you are using to improve the skills of your athlete so that he was able to produce that outstanding surprise performance? Talk into the microphone and then you translate, okay? Program latihan yang saya berikan kepada lalu Muhammad Johri selama di pusat latihan nasional. The uh, training program uh, given to lalu Muhammad Johri during his time at the national training center. One, satu memperbaiki teknik berlari. Improving running technique skills. Teknik ayunan tangan saat keluar dari start block. The swing of arms technique during the launching from the starting blocks. Teknik ayunan saat berlari. The swing of arms during the sprint or during the running. Frekuensi langkah kaki. The frequency of the footsteps. Posisi badan saat keluar dari start block, saat akselerasi, dan saat kecepatan maksimal, saat penurunan kecepatan, dan saat masuk garis finish. To train the body position during the launching from the starting blocks, during the acceleration time, during the maximum velocity, during the deceleration, and during the finish line. Seterusnya, posisi telapak kaki di saat start block saat, dan tubuh saat aba-aba siap dan atau siap dan posisi kaki dan tangan saat aba-aba tembakan start. To train the position of the foot soles during the uh, start and the body position during the sign of the starting of the race. Itu fokus yang saya latih untuk Muhammad Lalu, Lalu Muhammad Johri dalam latihan untuk fokusnya di teknik berlarinya. Jadi fokus ke teknik. Uh, those were some of the methods or focus of uh, my training to Johri. Berikutnya mental latihan mental kita melakukan dalam seminggu teknik uh, unifikasi. And also for the uh, mental uh, training, in once a week, we give Zohri a relaxation or unification training to improve uh, his mental skills. Agar dalam perlombaan, dia tidak takut sama lawan-lawan dan pemegang rekor, uh, nasio, uh, pemegang waktu terbaik, jadi dia fokus ke kecepatan dia sendiri. This mental training is very useful to give Zohri confidence and courage during the race, so he will focus on his own speed rather than focusing on other athletes' speed. Terima kasih. Thank you very much for this answer. Please, the floor is yours. We have microphones. Here's the first question, please. Hello, thank you. Hello, yeah, thanks. Um, congratulations on you know your achievement in the medal, and thank you for your uh, fantastic presentation. Uh, I would try to kind of uh, um, ask a question that could be answered by 
three of you in a way, is a bit of science and practice. Um, a focus on the mental kind of a side of, uh, of the training and, and the preparation. Uh, you mentioned sprint start, um, the coach, and obviously the athlete, and this is where the kind of the, the mental side of, of, uh, of conditioning is important. Um, how do you deal with that? I mean, if you can share some more information about, because we know like the sprint start is crucial, and it's not just like the body, you know, moving forwards. It's it's about to you know your brain to be able to uh, control the muscles and in a way uh, to to uh, accumulate a lot of energy and you know at once just to kind of uh, uh, propel you know your body forwards. Um, so how do you prepare for that? Any any special techniques or any kind of because we we've seen earlier from our presentation and what. Catherine presented that, for example, you know, Usain Bolt, maybe for different reasons, kind of had a bad start and that thing affected perhaps the outcome of the race. But if you can share something with us about your mental preparation for sprint start, and then if I can ask the second question or the same question then for, for the professor, that you mentioned in your presentation about variability in terms of the more tasks you do, the better, and that, that helps. But in athletics, sometimes things are defined. You, you, you're not allowed to have a lot of variability in terms of certain things. And maybe sprint start is one of them. You are confined, you, you got to sit down, you know, get ready and go. So it's not a kind of a, a how, what about the aspects of, of brain um, control? But that's, that's my bit, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Pilatika Satu, Silicon. Thank you. Persiapan lalu dalam menghadapi star mental fokus in finis fokus in no fokus ke garis finis berat badan center Kaki menginjak star block in pull in star block. Okay. So during the training, the coaching team trains Zohri to focus on the just the finish line to look forward to the finish line to put the center of weight of his body to the sole of the feet to push forward on the starting block. That's a good question actually, because you need a lot of variation. And that's why I also said that kids need to exercise and do as much of whatever exercise as possible, because there you form the basis for neurogenesis. But it's also true that um, in certain aspects, as in skills and, and in this case, that sprint that is unique, you need a lot of repetitions to improve. And we all know that learning in the beginning goes fast, but that little, little fraction that is necessary to win, that's only repetition. And the variation needs to, to come on beforehand, but when you need that very specific skill, it's like gymnastics, they do 100,000 repetitions before they are good in what they are doing. So you're completely right. If you look at our advice suggestion for your long-term athlete development, I'm confident that in fundamentals, in running, jumping, throwing, you will not only introduce to this basic movement, but also do bilateral development. So throwing right, throwing right and left side, jumping right and left leg, the turn, yeah? Doing a running approach and scissors from right side and left side. So you land to turn in both sides. So this is also some kind of variation we encourage coaches to do. And this has to start early, before the age of 12, when you have a good area for learning. So, this neuronal plasticity, please 
started early and developed both sides. Yeah? I'm always joking about this funny, I don't call it sport, this show business of football. So I'm not talking about Belgian football now. Um, I talk about, they're not German football. When the striker is in front of the goal, but he cannot finish because the ball is on the wrong foot. There is no wrong foot. I saw the steeplechase presentation of biomechanics today. Look at your steeplechaser. Some of them come, taka, 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 tak. They have only one leg for going over the steeple because you didn't do the homework. You didn't develop both sides. So it's very simple, basic work, neuronal plasticity, bilateral development, and start early. Then the athletes will profit. Please, who was next? That on? Oh, geez. Um, I'd like to ask Zori uh, what his background was. Was he a generalistic um, in all sports or when did he um, specialise in track and field? The athlete. Yeah. He's prepared, huh? Sejarah. Lalu Muhammad Johri mulai berlatih atletik tahun 2014 di sekolah menengah pertama. So uh, lalu Muhammad Johri started his uh, athletics uh, activities during his uh, junior high school time in 2014 in uh, West Nusa Tenggara Province. It's about uh, 1,500 kilometers from Jakarta, like twice Helsinki Rovaniemi distance. Dilatih oleh seorang guru olahraga. Uh, he was uh, trained uh, by uh, an ordinary, uh, not, not a special uh, sport uh, teacher, but just an ordinary sp uh, sport teacher at uh, his junior high school. Tahun 2016, Muhammad Johri ditarik masuk ke PPLP di Provinsi NTB. And on the 2016, the scouting team uh, recognizes uh, Zori and uh, put him into the uh, student training center uh, at, at the West uh, Nusa Tenggara province, so it, at the provincial level at first in 2016, just two years ago. Dilatih oleh tiga orang pelatih, yang satu Subagio, Bapak Komang, and Bapak Budiarsa. During his time at the... Uh, student training center. He was trained by three coaches, uh, Subagio, uh, Komang, and Mada Budiarsa up until 2017, just last year. Perlombaan yang diikuti selama di PPLP, kejuaraan nasional U18 tahun 2016 di Jakarta dengan catatan waktu 100 meter 10.9. So his uh, official competition that uh, he took during his time at the student training center was uh, 2016 in Jakarta national under 18 championship with uh, his 100 meter records uh, 10.9 seconds in the Indonesia school game tahun 2017 di Semarang 100 meter 10.57 in 2017 last year during Indonesia school games uh, he recorded for 100 meter 10.57 seconds. Berikutnya, kejuaraan nasional antar PPLP di Provinsi Papua dengan catatan waktu 100 meter 10.38. And also uh, last year, uh, student training center competitions among the provinces in Indonesia, he recorded uh, 100 meter for 10.38 seconds. So in just uh, one year, he reduced his time uh, almost a half a second. Tahun 2018, tim pencari bakat dari PB Pasi memanggil lalu memasuk untuk bergabung ke pusat, pende, pe, pusat latihan nasional yang berada di Jakarta. So earlier this year, the talent scouting team from uh, Indonesian Athlete Federation uh, called up lalu Muhammad Zohri to join the National Training Center in Jakarta and he was trained by uh, that you saw at the picture before, the lady, uh, Miss uh, Annie Mantoharjo. Uh, 
Mr. Kikin who and next Erwin. sit next to me and Erwin who and sit next doctor. to our ambassador and also the medical team. So he he purely uh, uh, we found them from like a scratch. Oops, sorry. We found them from the scratch and we focus him only in uh, sprint racing. Tes perlombaan pertama di kejuara di saat dia masuk di pemusatan latihan tes event Asian Game 2018 pada bulan Februari 100 meter 1038 and during the test uh, for the Asian Games who will be held uh, next month in Jakarta uh, in February uh, this year he recorded also 10.38 seconds tanggal 6 April sampai 6 Juni 2018 Johri ikut training camp di Amerika in uh, six from the 6th of April until 6th of June 2018 uh, Zori participated at the training camp in at the uh, in the United States mengikuti perlombaan tiga kali dalam satu bulan during his uh, one month training camp at the US he uh, participated at the three competitions yang pertama April di San Adam Westmont 100 meter 1056 Uh, the first one was 6th of April in Sam Adams Westman 100 meter 10.56 seconds 14 April di Ucla 100 meter 1036 14 of April at the UCLA 100 meter 10.36 seconds 18 sampai 21 April di Mat Sacramento 100 meter 1033 And uh, later that month in Sacramento, uh, he recorded 10.33 seconds. Tanggal 6 Mei pulang ke Indonesia dan berlatih di Jakarta. Terus tanggal 7 Juni sampai 10 Juni mengikuti kejuaraan Asia Junior di Gipu, Jepang. 100 meter 1025. Yes, on the 6th, 6th of May, uh, he uh, went back to Indonesia. And on the 7th to 10th of June 2018, Uh, during the Asia Junior competition in uh, Japan, National he record. recorded 10.25 uh, seconds as well as the new national junior record. Dan sekarang mengikuti kejuaraan dunia di Tamper ikut 100 meter 10.18. And as you witnessed just uh, this week, he recorded 10.18 seconds as the new the new national under 20 record. So I think I'm trying to add to her question and would like to ask uh, coach and the athlete uh, before 2014 when he started to specialize in athletics sprint events what other sports did he participate in in growing up at any uh, recreational level or masuk ke atletik dia pemain sepak bola before he was a football player For how long? Yes. Berapa lama? Sejak, sejak tiga, tiga, tiga tahun. For three years before. Tapi tidak ada pernah. Any other sports did he enjoy or Asian? Surfing. Uh, surfing. 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 Dia di Lombok. Uh, I have uh, one question uh, to the professor. First, uh, you are talking about this uh, central fatigue and mental fatigue. Uh, I would like to know, like, for the application, like, how to assess, like, if the, an, an an athlete he has like this problem of performance decrement, uh, how to assess it? What I know, you can detect it like from the blood, is the from the platelets, but uh, do you really need it? Do you really need that uh, analysis? Um, yes, and can I have the second question? Uh, the second question, like, uh, about also the mental and central fatigue. How you relate with this endurance uh, and strength training? Is there, like, for example, like, in strength training, you will burden more to this uh, central or mentally? And maybe uh, also to relate uh, to the athlete? Um, should I ask in Indonesia or...? <laughs> Uh, for the athlete, uh, do you really uh, have you already implemented? Yeah. 
uh, okay, have you already implemented uh, what the professor uh, uh, suggests on this room? Thank you very much. Um, our, first, our first answer um, about the central fatigue. Um, it's very difficult to really access central fatigue. Actually, um, we do that in, in athletes also with some, some blood markers of, let's say, uh, metabolizer. We can find some hormones also. But actually, um, I think the theory about central fatigue, if uh, coaches and a team surrounding athletes also have very good sports psychologists, they will also help to develop the brain in the, in the right way. So the, also to avoid mental fatigue. Of course, you can always have caffeine because, as I said, in the morning, we all need caffeine, coffee or tea, or even uh, we just finished studies where we clearly showed that cocoa flavanol, so the uh, active ingredient of chocolate, Belgian chocolate, of course, <laughs> But the active ingredient increases brain blood flow. So that gives also a very good focus act. But it needs to be high concentration uh, and not, let's say, 500 grams of uh, chocolate eating because that's not that good for you. So it's the same for mental and central fatigue. When we're talking about non-functional overreaching and overtraining syndrome, that's a totally different talk. That's, uh, there we really look at hormones in the periphery. Uh, with athletes. I hope I answered your question. Okay, uh, if I may answer, uh, the coach uh, said that uh, they, the, the coaching team already implemented uh, some of the uh, what uh, the professor uh, suggested the, to combine the mental and uh, skills uh, training. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, it is also connected to like uh, local wisdom in Indonesia where also are some uh, religious fact factors that uh, Lalu Muhammad Zori uh, is, a, is a dedicated uh, Muslim that uh, he always pray five times a day. That helps also to f uh, gain a focus uh, during the training or before the race. Thank you for the chance and congratulations for this wonderful achievement. So I am very much inspired by the success of uh, the present athlete uh, because we Ethiopians think that uh, height and weight, taking you back to the, bo the biomechanics group, height and weight from Bolt and others, when, when we come to the present champion, uh, I think the stride frequency, the stride length, the transition phase can be greatly affected. So, uh, should we expect some changes from the biomechanical analysis of the present champion? And can we use this as hunting talents for sprints, especially in Ethiopia, uh, which I think we are more or less the same height and weight with the present champion. Thank you. You want to respond to this? I cannot respond to this. Mm. I'm not in biomechanics. Since Roman is not in biomechanics, let me try to give you an answer. If you look at the performance limiting factors of a sprinter, yes, height, liver, femur length, and especially frequency play a role. But most of all, I want to come to his topic, neuronal speed. How fast are you? And this is not only the fast twitch fibers, this is also the system behind which allows you to fire. So when you look for a talent, I had a situation actually in Indonesia. Don't look for the tall one with the long liver. Look first of all for those who are fast and then when they are tall on the top and have a long liver and are able to produce frequency then you have a second use and bolt so don't change now your perspective and say 
uh, we have to look for shorter liver, longer liver. The key element to start with is fast twitch and neuronal ability. Because the performance limiting factor is how quick can you open this hip extension sling? How quick can you make the hip extension? And this you can measure. I hope this, this is helping you. Um, I think I think that's uh, one of the important things is also the, the um, interaction between the brain and muscle. And also the skill development needs to take a long time. But recently we now also found out, well not us, but other colleagues, that not only the brain has a memory, but also muscle cells have memory function. So skills can be in incorporated in your muscles and for instance if you're injured it takes less long to get the same skill back because the interaction between brain and, and muscles are uh, present okay there were two last questions please Dr. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Bermond, please. Uh, Stefan Bermond from IWF uh, Health and Science Department. Uh, I've got a question for Professor Mersen, and first, thank you for your talk, which was very interesting and inspiring. Uh, it's related to the part of your, the very first part of your talk about carbohydrates. Um, you know that mostly in endurance events, now it's very popular to go for uh, health periodization, um, sorry, so for nut nutrition periodization with sleep low glycogenes, for instance, and um, so basically it's going for training and not taking any carbohydrates following training, sleeping with, without carbohydrates intakes, so sleeping with low carbs. So it it's, it's promotes endurance adaptation. Isn't there any conflicting uh, results between the peripheral adaptation and the central adaptation, or let's say central fatigue or mental fatigue here? Could you comment on that, please? That's a very good question because uh, there isn't uh, that much known about that. Um, but low carb, sleep low, train uh, high, let's say, afterwards reloading is good for muscles, for creating adaptation in endurance sport. Um, we also know that um, more and more nutrition interventions need to, need to be individualized because not every not every athlete will have that adaptation. Is there a brain adaptation? Um, well, we all know that our uh, blood, blood glucose level stays quite uh, stable. And the main reason for that is because your, your brain needs sugar. So there can be a super compensation in glycogen, but it, it, it goes fast in the brain, but it also is used quite fast. And I don't think that there will be a conflict with the peripheral part because it's a basic homeostatic uh, issue that your blood sugar level will, will quite be stable unless, of course, you have diabetes or other aspects. But normally it stays quite, sim uh, quite, quite stable, luckily. Before we go to the last question, I just got the information he had in his gold race a frequency of 4.98 per seconds yeah so which is not bad but we all know we have to see it with the femur length but 4.9 is definitely a high frequency yeah. uh, my name is paul emilia dami i'm a medical doctor at waf health and science department thank you very much for your uh, outstanding presentation um, we know that central fatigue it's very much connected also to thermoregulation and body temperature uh, you briefly commented on tyrosine and the effect it might have on thermal regulation, especially in certain categories of workers like soldiers or those that are wearing specific garments. Uh, could you further comment on that, please? I can uh, give another talk on that um, because um, we did quite some uh, intervention studies in cycling, with cyclists, of course, because that's easier to control than running. Uh, exercise in, in the lab um, in the heat. Um, for instance, we manipulated okay. the neurotransmitter systems. We gave ethically approved acute dosages of uh, antidepressants to our subjects. We gave them placebo controlled double blind. We gave them, for instance, uh, citalopram, which is a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, no effect on performance. When you manipulate 
the noradrenergic system, uh, for instance, with uh, reboxetine, performance gets even worse because of the peripheral effect of the noradrenaline of that drug. But then we um, gave them bupropion. Um, bupropion uh, is an uh, antidepressant that had as a side effect that smokers that were using that quit smoking. So the company labeled it Zyban, and it's an, uh, uh, a drug that helps to quit smoking. No performance uh, difference in 18 degrees Celsius. And what did we do? We did a, a warm-up of one hour, well, warm up one hour at 55% of the maximum wattage, and then they had a time trial at 75%. So there were guys who were, had to cycle as fast as possible during uh, 30 minutes at 300 watts. No effect there, but in the heat, they were 3.4 uh, minutes faster on a 30 minute time trial. But their core temperature went up to about 39 and a half, 40 degrees Celsius. We did the same with, and this is an important one, <coughs> with uh, methylphenidate, Ritalin. They did seven minutes faster in the heat, but core temperature went above 40 degrees Celsius, so that's dangerous. Because what we did do, we checked that afterwards in rat studies, and we saw that you, by uh, manipulating the dopaminergic system, you um, block the heat dissipation mechanism, and you cannot get rid of the heat that you are producing. So that's very dangerous. So all the kids that are doing track and field in 30, 40, 35 degrees Celsius and are on, let's say, the ADHD medication, have to be careful. Okay, before we go to the last plus one question, the background here is definitely that he thinks already about the next World Championships and the thermoregulation situation we will find there. It's definitely another topic and another seminar maybe. Last plus one and then we make a break. They need coffee, mouth rinse. Um, as a Belgian coach, of course, I like to ask a question to the Belgian professor. Um, <coughs> there is some research also about uh, mouth rinsing with quinine, which would uh, stimulate uh, the power out output. And that's very important for uh, explosive, uh, explosive uh, athletes like sprinters. Um, can you tell something uh, about it, Professor? Because uh, I think uh, it's important too. There have been uh, only a few publications, uh, and some of them weren't that well controlled, but uh, quinine, indeed, the, the bitter taste will also influence those sensors in your, in your mouth cavity, and there's a, a direct connection with the brain. So there is some uh, proof we need to redo that because with carbohydrate it's, it's clear, and also with caffeine, but that the same mechanism might act uh, through quinine, for instance. Uh, but there are even some studies now on uh, mental mouth rinsing and also helping, for instance, to reduce core temperature only with me men mental uh, products, for instance, which also can help. So I think that we are at the start of uh, getting the brain uh, picked out and seeing what's happening and how we can trick the mechanisms there. But uh, I also say uh, the same sentence. We probably don't have enough brain to understand how the brain is working. <laughs> I think this is a perfect summing up. Thank you.